Hi, hello, and welcome to Rebel Unicorn Crafts. Today, I want to pit Craftsmart against Anita's acrylic paint. These are both craft paints, and from my experience, this one is usually cheaper and easier to get than this one, but I want to see if there's any difference. I'm going to test them, just these thinned with water, and let's see how they perform during the actual pouring, as well as the finish once they're dry. Before we really jump into this, let's take a guess. This is number one and number two. Which do you think is Craftsmart and which do you think is Anita's paint? Guess in the comments below. Not only are these different formulas, but I don't necessarily have the same colors in everything. So I'm going to need to try to mix up the same colors across both so that we can at least compare colors to colors. Let's get started. I grabbed a bunch of my Anita's and Craftsmart paints and got them out so I could kind of figure out what colors I could make similarly across the two of them. And one benefit of Anita's is I do think that their pre-mixed colors are superior to Craftsmart. There's some really pretty colors. So what I'm gonna do is actually use two of my favorite colors from the Anita's line and try to match up those two colors. And then I will also just do a black and a white from each. My first impressions of these two paints are that Craftsmart is typically thinner and the Anita's is thicker. And I do also notice this as the Anita sits, the longer it sits, the thicker it does become. So that might be a fault of the paint, but it also might just be part of their formulas. Now the two colors I'm going to be matching are the green and the purple from the Anita's. So if you are curious about how I matched those colors approximately, you can stick around. If not, you can fast forward a little bit. But in order to get that greenish blue, uh, it's kind of a sea foam color that, that I really like. I took the Craftsmart turquoise apple tart and dark blue and I mix those together until it was about the right color. It's similar, it's not perfect, but it's close. The other color I was mixing up was based on this Anita's kind of light purple lavender color and for that I used the purple Craftsmart, some white, and then this Anita's purple is really muted so I took the color on the opposite side of the color wheel which is yellow I added a bit of that I mixed that up until it was about the right kind of lightness and then I ended up actually adding a little red to it so that it more closely matched the kind of pinky tone to that purple again it's close and similar it's not perfect but it is close I'm only going to be using four colors in this test. We've got the purple, the green, white, and black. Quick reminder that I'm only using water to mix these colors so that we're just testing the paint and nothing else. As usual, I will only show you this with one color of each, but I'm going to add just pipettes worth of water. You always want to be careful when you're adding water that you're not just pouring it in from a cup because then you can easily add too much and it is a little tedious but it actually does mix up smoother when we do it this way by adding one at a time and mixing a little bit. I don't do mine by volume because it does seem to depend on how long the paint has sat the brand, the color, the formula, all that jazz. And I do it by kind of a feel. So I add it in until it runs nicely down the side or when you drizzle it on top, you for just a split second see an impression of the drizzle but then it kind of goes into the rest of it. Some people like theirs thicker, some people like theirs thinner. This is Probably the most frustrating part of fluid painting is just figuring out what consistency you like best. And you're going to have to play with this a little bit. I know that's frustrating to not know the exact formula, but the best way to do this is to just try and learn how it works best for you. 
My general observation from this color mixing or paint mixing session is that the Anitas does require more water to thin it to the correct consistency versus the Craftsmart, which might mean that you will need more pour medium if you're going to be using one. I don't usually use one, but if you are going to be using one, you might end up needing more to use the Anitas paint. During this test, we're going to have the Craftsmart here on the left-hand side of the screen and the Anita's paint on the right-hand side. As per my usual, we're gonna be doing a dirty cup just because I like to do that as a test for kind of a baseline. The only thing I'm gonna to do to control is I'm going to pour down the side of the cup instead of directly into the middle so that we won't have quite as much mixing going on so that we're kind of controlling the results a little bit so there's less stirring and it'll be more consistent across. I will go ahead and make these dirty cups by doing them each color at a time in both so that we know we have the same layers and about the same. I'm doing a count um, and we'll make these dirty cups real quick. All right, just finishing these cups up and I'm using eight by 10 canvases that are propped up on tacks, which is an easy way to elevate these. Now that they're finished, let's examine these cups. So this is the one with Craftsmart and the paint is nice and separated. We've got clean lines and already right away, there's no additives in this, but I'm already getting some lacing and some cells in the Anitas from it just sitting there. And I did try to actually do these as similarly as I possibly could. We'll flip these over and then we're gonna do a real quick close up of my absolutely favorite part. This is my absolute favorite part when the suction releases and the paint actually comes out from the flipped cup. And it just releases. Just a little boop. Okay, so we're already seeing some kind of interesting things going on. The Anita's there's a lot of white and you know, this can happen in general with the way you pour things. I might've been more heavy, but I'm seeing a lot more white on the Anita's and I did try, I had about the same amount of paint in each one and I tried to pour for the same amount of time on each one. And I'm able to get enough coverage from both of these, but the paint, the white is definitely more prominent. The other thing is there are cells in both of these, but the Anita's ones are immediately more prominent and there are more of them. So we're getting more cells and kind of lacing on the Anita's than we are on the Craftsmart. Let's go ahead and finish moving these around now to see how they end up. I sped this up 600% so you wouldn't have to wait and you get the satisfaction of seeing this happen quickly. But in general, I tried to get as much paint off as I possibly could during this so that it wouldn't crack because what I believe happens with cracking is when you have too thick of paint and sometimes mediums can help, but sometimes they even crack too. So your best bet is to get as much of that excess paint so it's not just sitting in the middle and drying at different times in the drying time. My general hunches before I started this test were that Anita's was gonna have more cells because that's what I've had experience with, but I am absolutely blown away at how different these two paintings are. Even though they've got the same colors, I thinned them to about the same consistency and I poured them in the same way. They could not be any different. The one with Craftsmart, I did torch both of these and I got a few more little cells that popped up, but the one with Craftsmart, it's more like marbly or kind of like planetary weather, whereas the Anita's one is almost all white and almost all cells. I think this is gonna be one of those things where 
you should do kind of what you prefer. If you like more marbly looking paintings, then the Craft Smart's the way to go. If you're looking for a ton of cells without having to use additives, Anita's might be the way. The other thing I'm kind of thinking is that in Craft Smart, the black paint is somehow stronger and in Anita's, the white paint is somehow stronger because of how prominent the black was on Craft Smart and how prominent the white was on Anita's. But the real test is what do these look like the next day once they're dried? When they're dried, I want to make sure that there's no cracking in either of them and that the finish is nice and smooth. I didn't get any cracking on either of these paintings and I think that's because I was able to get all the excess paint off. And in general, they're both nice and smooth, but they are matte, so there's not gloss. I know Anita's does have a gloss version of their paint, so if you're looking for that, maybe you could use that, but I still can't believe how different these two paintings are. They couldn't be really any different given that I used the same techniques, the same thinning techniques, and I'm impressed by both, but also surprised. What do you think? Which one did you guess right? Which one is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you have a magically creative day.